Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix and today I am going to show you how to shade your car. Uh, we are going to be using what's called procedural shadings. What procedural shaders means is that you are going to be using what Maya provides. We're not going to actually add any rust or any dents or anything. We're just going to actually add texture to make the car look more than just a model. We wanted to make it look like a vehicle. Today I'm going to show you how to use what's called mental rays material shader. We're going to go to windows, rendering editors, hypershade. Okay, so the Hypershade is a library of shaders. That means that you can create your shaders and you're going to be assigning them to your vehicle. So for example, you can already see that we have Lambert 1. You basically want to leave that alone. You got the particles, the shader, and this is the one I assigned to the car. To take a look at our mental ray shaders, we're going to scroll down, look over here to the left, and find the mental ray materials. And you can see that we have uh, several options. Usually, in Maya, we have blends and Lamberts, and you recognize all of these. But in Mental Ray, we actually have some other shaders. The one I want to show you is two of them. We want to, I want to show you the Car Paint and the Material X. Uh, let's go ahead and start with Amiya Material X. Go ahead and click on it. And we have a shader. And over here is your library. So over here, this is actually your work area. And it says right here, work area. The fun thing about this is that it looks like a blend. And I'm just going to scoot this a little bit so I can look at my car and I'm going to assign it. So I can either middle mouse and drag the shader to the object or I can select the object, right click on the shader and say assign material to selection. There's multiple ways you can assign a shader. So when we render, the important thing to remember is that this is a mental ray shader. That means that you should render it in mental ray. The default is Maya software. Make sure you are in mental ray. My test resolution is at 50%. I'm going to go ahead and use a render setting of 640 by 480 so I can actually get a larger image. And it's going to take a little bit longer, but there you go. You can see that there's a little bit of reflection there, which is the purpose of mental ray. We actually get to see advanced things like reflections. So let's say, for example, I want to go ahead and open up the attributes so I can either select a shader, do a control A or just double click and I can change the color. So if I wanted to make it look more like a dark, you can see that it automatically changes. It also does the windows, but I'm going to fix that in a second. Or you can select whatever you like. Some people like to make a Barbie pink. Other people like to try different things. So it's completely up to you how you want to do your shading. I'm going to make mine a sophisticated gray color. It's a sophisticated car. It deserves it. So I'm going to select the door as well and assign a shader. Again, right click, assign material. Don't forget the other side. Right click, assign material. Now the amazing thing about Mia Material X is that there's a lot of options that you can use. So open up my Hypershade. I'm going to label this because there's going to be so many materials that's going to get confusing. So I'm going to call this Car Body. I'm going to grab another Mia Material X. This one I want to make it look like it's chrome. So the great thing about Mia Material X is that there is a presets and there's a little asterisk next to it. And if you click and hold, you're going to see a lot of different options. And one of them is in fact Chrome. I'm going to scoot this a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So presets, Chrome, and then I'm going to say replace. So what that means is that the, deep, the preset basically replaces the shader. So now I can use that shader to uh, place it in other objects. So for example, I might want to make my hubcaps chrome-like. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. It's going to be kind of hard to select all the spokes. So I'm going to select a bunch of them and then deselect the rest. Then I'm going to assign the material. Right-click, assign material. So I'm going to get closer and then render. And there you go. You can see that it's a very quick way of making it look like the material is actually chrome. I'm going to name this material chrome. Again, it's going to, I'm going to get a lot of them. So it's important to label your material. So I'm going to do that to all the other parts, but let me go ahead and show you some other fun things that this is capable of doing. So I'm going to go back to the hyper shade, create a Mia material X. I'm going to go into my presets. And this time I might choose something more like uh, rubber, for example. Again, it's off screen, but I'm just going to go into replace. And this is going to be for my tires. So I'm going to select my tires. Right click, assign material. 
Might as well go ahead and do it to the other side. Oops, be careful when you select. I'm holding down shift, right click, assign material. Okay, I'm gonna render and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so I applied the chrome and the rubber to all the tires and also to all the spokes and hubcaps. So now let's go ahead and keep on moving forward. I'm gonna go ahead and assign a, create a new shader. We have Material X presets. Um, there's a lot of things you guys can use. You can try a matte plastic or a glossy finish. I'm gonna do a matte plastic replace and I'm going to assign it to my, uh, these chairs here. So right click, assign. This is going to be a chair texture or seat. It's probably more the accurate term. Again, render. Okay, it's coming along. Uh, let's go ahead and do glass. So you don't have to actually just grab p pieces of geometry. You can actually select faces. So for example, I want to do this glass. So I'm going to go ahead and, whoops. I'm going to go ahead and click on all the glass bits. And deselect the ones that I don't need. Got to make sure. I think I selected something. There we go. And uh, I'm going to assign a new material. So right click, assign new material. I can always go to mental ray again. And this time I'm going to pick a new material X. This is going to be glass. And again, it's up to you which preset you want to use. There's a lot of them. I'm going to use uh, glass physical replace and then take a look at it's how it looks. There you go. Nice, quick glass. I'm going to continue working on it. However, I wanted to show you a particular shader that's actually really awesome, which is called the, the Mental Ray Car Shader. And we've been using Mia Material X. What I really wanted to show you is actually the car paint. Now, what's popular about car paint is that not only is it weather resistant and heat resistant and all these crazy things, but it's also really beautiful. So the nice thing about car paint is the way it has a tendency to reflect. So for example, in this picture, you guys can see that it's actually full of little speckles, right? And that's what makes car paint so beautiful is that it reflects the environment really well. It changes the shader. As you can see, it's a little bit, the highlight or the specularity is actually almost like a different color. It's not white, it's actually turning blue. It's just stunning paint basically so that's why we enjoy cars so much is because they're so sparkly and especially brand new washed cars that look so beautiful when they're nice and clean mental ray actually provides a similar thing and it's called a mia car paint so let's go ahead and plug it and you can already see the shader has a little bit of speckles on it and let's go ahead and assign it and we'll render so you can see that this one's pretty reflective just like a real car and you can see the speckles now the speckles are actually really small so we need to change it but let's take a look at the attributes of the shader this is the paint and the first thing we want to do is maybe change the color so I want to again use my dark gray and if I render it again you're gonna see that there's a little bit more control over the shader So you can see that my paint is actually pretty dark, but my highlight is actually purple. So there's ways to change that. So I might make my gray just a little bit grayer. And this lit color, again, it's up to you what color you wanna use. You can use a very dark blue or, you know, um, it's really up to you how you wanna change it. So go ahead and let's take a look at it now that I've changed the color or the lit color. Okay, so now when the light hits it, it's going to get this particular highlight. What I really wanna show you guys is also the flake parameters. Right now it's a 0.12, that's pretty, um, it depends on the scale of your car. I'm gonna change this to 0 0.009 and see how it looks like. All right, there it is, that's, kind of, that's the look that I want. I want it to have speckles, nice quality speckles. Okay, I'm going to bring back my glass, so I messed that up. So I'm going to go back to face mode, maybe go this way. Grab these, right click, assign existing material, glass. All right, I'm going to scroll back and let's take a look what it looks like so far. It's moving forward. The next thing I want to do is actually um, 
give this something to reflect right now the environment is black so that's why everything is reflecting black let's go ahead and change the color to do that we're going to grab the camera open up the attributes and scroll down until you see environment and in environment you want to change it to some sort of sky blue okay it's a couple of things I need to fix but at least you get an idea of what of how to actually start texturing your vehicle so what I'm going to do next is just pause the video and then I'm going to go ahead and finish shading it so I'll be right back okay so I used some of the shaders and went ahead and assigned it on all the objects and there is my car so the next part in modeling or texturing something or any type of model is to actually light it. I know you may be happy with what it looks like right now, but it can look so much better. Shadows is a huge shadow and light information is a really important part of showing off your model and your textures. So I'm going to show you in the next tutorial how to create a lighting scheme that's going to look like studio lighting for an object. Now the purpose for shadows is that is so that you know that this object is actually on the floor. So for example, you could actually tell me that this, this object is actually three inches off the ground or if it's actually on the ground, I can't tell because there's no shadow information. So what I'm gonna do next is actually light it so that not only will the vehicle look even nicer, but it will also tell the viewer where this object is in place. All right, so that's what's going to be next. Hopefully this was a nice lesson on Maya mental ray shaders. And next we're gonna go into lighting. I'll see you there.